Now I want to do one more thing to this debug console, which is going to introduce a, another part of the CMS, which is going to be our settings table in the database. And this is going to be used for pretty much just general website settings. And these are going to be settings that we can query and look for anytime we need to on a page. And what we're going to use them for in this case is to toggle whether the debugger is on at all or not. Because, you know, when this goes to production, you don't want that little debug button up there. And we could just hide the debug button, but then we also have all that information here being loaded. Because just because we don't see it, it is still part of the page. So we're using our resources to query the database, display all this extra HTML inside here, and we don't really want to do that all the time. And even maybe not even just for production, maybe while you're in development, maybe you don't always want to have this debugger on either. So let's hop over to PHP My Admin and click up top here in the breadcrumbs on, on Atom CMS, and we're going to add another table. And for this table, we're going to call it settings. And for the number of columns, we're going to want three. We're going to have the ID, the label, which I'll explain in a second, and then the value. And in this case, the ID, we're not going to make it numeric. This is a rare occasion where I'm not going to use the auto increment and numbers. We're going to give it a uh, somewhat of a legible name to remember it by something like debug-on or debug-status. That's going to be the ID. Now that's not necessarily pretty, so that's what I'm going to use the second column for, the label. So in our admin, when we pull up these settings, I'll use the label in order to identify which setting we're changing. So we might just call it debug status um, in just a nicer looking format. And then the value would be the actual value. So in this case, uh, for debug status, it's going to be a 1 or a 0, on or off, true or false. So we're going to name it settings, and we're going to give it three columns, and click go. And again, remember when you're making anywhere from one to three column tables, the uh, layout of this form is a little different. So this first column is going to be ID, the second column, label, and the third column, value. So for ID, the type is actually going to be varcar this time. Label is going to be varcar. And the value, um, in this case, for this particular setting that we're going to create, we just need it to be a 1 or a 0. However, I want to have the ability to put pretty much anything I want in here. So I'm actually going to set this to long text. So now I could put in a 1 or a 0, a yes or no, a small string, or a big block of text if I wanted to. So it just gives me some versatility here. So I'll come back over here to the ID column and the length. Let's go ahead and just set this to 200. That's probably being pretty generous. Label 200. And then for the value, we keep that empty because long text has its own predefined length. And then for ID, we need to come down to index and set this as the primary. And we're done. Remember, we're not doing auto increment because this isn't an integer anymore. This is a this is going to be a text ID. So go ahead and click save. And there we go, we have our settings table. And let's go ahead and insert a record. And again, since this is not an auto increment and this isn't a numeric value for the ID, we need to put that ID in. And we're going to call this debug-status. For the label, we'll just make this a little fancier looking. Debug status. And then for the value, let's just put in the number 1. That's going to mean yes. If we put in 0, it'd mean no. And this is going to control whether that button shows up and whether the debug console itself exists. 
So I'll click go. Click on browse and we can see we got a record in there. And now we need to do something with it. So hop back over to Aptana. So now let's go over to our setup.php and we want to get that value. Let's come down here on line 30 and let's run a query. So Q equals and let's write out our query. So we want to do select all from settings where ID equals, and this is a string so we need it in single quotes debug status then we need to run this query store the result in R, so R equals mysqli underscore query and then we need our values, we need the database connection comma, then the query, so Q. Close that. And then we need to save that setting into an array. So we'll create an array, we'll call this debug equals mysqli underscore fetch underscore soch. And we need to put in the result, which is R, and close that with semicolon. So now we have access to the value of the debug status setting. And we would do that by using the value key. So debug value. This would store the one or zero that we put in. And we can use this across our page to check and run if statements to see if the value is one or if it's zero. However, this isn't very efficient. So what we can actually do is go in and create a function that gets these settings for us. So let's hop into our data.php and let's create another function. And we'll do this on top here of data page. So we'll do function space, we'll say data underscore setting. We need to give it two parameters, the database connection and the ID. Go ahead and make our curly brackets. So we'll write our function inside here. Let's hop back over to setup and go ahead and remove this uh, line 35 here. And we're going to take 33 to 30, this query, cut that out, hop over to data, and paste that inside of our function. I usually create these data functions in order to pull all the data for a specific record in a table. And in this case, we really just want the value. So let's go ahead and actually add another underscore here. Call this data underscore setting underscore value. So now in order to make this work for anything, we need to come into our query and replace this hard-coded debug status with ID. And since we know that they're going to be strings, we need to make sure that this is wrapped in a single quotes. And to keep consistent with the way we, we format these other functions here, Let's change this to data, which we can continue to reuse because it's only, it only exists inside these functions, so that's fine. And now instead of, uh, like we did on the page array, returning data, we're just going to return the value. So we're going to return data and then the value key. So now when we run this over on setup, unlike with the uh, page function, this will turn page into an array that holds all of the information in the uh, pages table for that record. However, for the settings, it's just going to return a variable, one value. So let's actually come up here underneath functions 
And uh, I'm going to create a comment here. Call this site setup. Actually, put a little colon down here too. Um, and we're going to run that function. So we're going to create a variable. We're going to call it debug equals. And then now we just need to run that data underscore setting value. And it's going to want two parameters. So the ID, we just hard code that in here. So inside a set of quotes, debug dash status. And close that statement. There we go. So now we can use that settings table over and over and over for other settings. And we just need to run this function in order to grab the value that we want. So now anywhere on the page we can use this debug variable here.